Okay, same as last time. Um, we're going to express BC in terms of U and T. Okay. So I'm just going to label up what I know. I know that U, <laughs> really straight lines here, I know that U is this, which would mean that this is also U. I know this is T. So this is also T. Now, in this particular case, this isn't massively helping, but it's just to show you for other questions where it might be more relevant, okay? And again, I know that this is V, which means that this vector in here is also V. So I'm trying to get to uh, B to C. So if you were to draw a line, you'd be saying, all right, well, I'm going down T and along U. Okay, so I'm going down T and going the opposite way from T. So I'm going to call that up. I'll keep it in the same colour, actually, as the, the vector. So it'll be negative T, because I'm going against T. And I'm going along U. So it's going to be plus U. And to make it look nice, I'll just write it with U take away T. Okay, there we go. So that gets me from B to C. That's that vector there. I'm going from B to C this way. Very good. Uh, now, M is the midpoint of BC, so it's bang in the middle. Express M to D in terms of those vectors. I'm trying to get from M all the way to D. Okay. Well, I'm definitely, let's forget this bit just now, I'm definitely going negative U and plus V. Okay, so I'm definitely doing negative, oops, different colour. Negative U and plus V. And the hard bit here is knowing, well, what is this bit then? Well, if I start on M and I get go from M to C, what is that? Well, we know that this whole vector here is U take away T. Okay. We know it's U take away T. And if the midpoint is bang in the middle, then I'm only going to go half of that value, aren't I? So if I do that, divided by 2, and that will represent this part of the vector here. Okay, u take away t is the whole thing. So this bit here is a half u take away t. So let's uh, simplify that a little bit. Um, oh, I think I'll just, oh no, I'll try and do nice colours actually. So that's going to be a half u, and then negative u stays the same, plus v stays the same, and that will be take away t over 2 as well. Okay, so I've got half u take away u, so what's a half take away one? You know, half take away one, that's going to give me negative a half. So I'm going to end up with negative a half u take away t over two, and I'm still going to have my plus v, absolutely. Now to make it look nice, I could probably just stick v in the front. Okay, so let's just double check our answer, make sure that's all okay. So negative t plus u, Oh, look at that. Oh, I would have put it around the other way, but yep, fair play. And then this one, we've got negative a half t. There's our negative a half t. We've got negative a half u and plus v. So notice that they've put the fraction up front. I've written it slightly differently, but that is absolutely okay. Again, it would look nicer with the v in the front, I would say. But yeah, um, it's okay to write it like that with the fractions if you want. I've just simply just made a wee bit nicer. Okay? You could have probably taken a half out of that and written it that way if you liked as well. Point is, label up your diagram and just take your time. These are really nice questions to, to get, actually. Okay, so last one. Um, how do we read at this? Oh, I've covered up. Sorry, I'll pause it. I should have said, I quite like it when people try and, um, if, you know, pause the video, try it yourself, and then if you want, you know, watch me go through it. So, you know, hope you didn't see the answer there. But how do we read at that? Uh, pause the video, have a read, have a go, uh, and see what you think is different about this one. should say we're trying to find, sorry, I've kind of cut, dropped the question a bit off. We're trying to find E, and we're trying to find F. Okay, sorry. I've just dropped, so I don't want to do the rest of the question, that's a grand one. But yeah, we're trying to find E and F, see what you think of that. Okay, well the first thing I would do with a question like this, and again this is, I'm, I'm going through different questions for vectors, this is the, the kind of space diagram type stuff, and this is the last one, which usually means it's the trickier one. I like this question as well because it's good for your higher um, exam skills. Read the question and tick off what you know. Okay, So the square-based pyramid is a really interesting point there. The square base obviously means that this dimension 
is the same as this dimension. So if I know this one, I know this one, I know this one, I know this one. Okay, so make sure we know that. Okay, so the square has a side length of 60. Brilliant. Okay, so I know that this dimension here is 60. I know that this whole dimension over here is 60, which means that this is 60, which means that this is 60. Brilliant. So I've now used that and I've used this. Okay, and then we've got the x, the y, the z, right? The quarters of d are 30, 30, 80. Okay, so that means we're going along 30, which makes sense because d is bang in the middle, isn't it? Along 30, then you're going in the y direction 30, obviously. It means the height is 80, doesn't it? Yeah, so we know that it's 30, 30 in the middle, that's obvious. But we now know that the height of this pyramid is 80, so I've used that. Okay. E is the midpoint. That's fine. I might just put a little M in there just to remind me. And this is a ratio 2 to 1. So let's try and get these coordinates then. I think this one looks a bit easier to start off with. So in the x direction, how far do I have to travel? Um, so I'm going to go along here, 60 degrees in the x direction. How far do I have to go in the y direction? Well, this whole line is 60 and it's 2 to 1 along. Now 2 to 1 means there's three parts. So if I do 60 divided by 3, each part is 20. So I'll just maybe draw that for you, actually. So if I say that there's three parts, I'll do 60 divided by 3, which is going to give me 20. So if you divide it by 3 like that, you're going 20, 40, finally get to 60. And our point is on here. So that's going to be 40. Yeah, it is 2. Effectively, that's saying 2 thirds, because 2 plus 1 is 3. So it's 2 thirds of the way along, you know. Uh, 40, and in the z direction, going to be zero isn't it it's not up at all in the z direction it's still in this bottom line okay so that's a lot easier let's have a look at point e okay uh, so it's halfway along this line d b so i think what we're going to have to do is say well i know d is 30 30 80 and i'm going to have to work out what b is and then go bang in the middle yeah so let's try and get to b well, it's going to be in the same um, so it's going to be 60 over here, isn't it? I'm going along 60, yeah, and then I'm going to up 60 as well on the y, and then I've got a zero. So we're saying what is bang in the middle of these numbers? Well, between 80 and zero, so it must be 40 high. Makes sense, it's the midpoint, you know, it's halfway up the thing, that makes sense. And between 30 and 60, so to get the middle number, we add them together, divide by 2, it's going to be 45. So 45, 45. And 40, let's just double check that's right. There we go, 60, 40, and zero. So this question is a little bit different from what we were doing before. Uh, it was more coordinates than vectors, but I really liked it because it's kind of getting you to think about what a vector is, which is really just, you know, moving in different planes. Okay, and actually, this is a question that people uh, struggle with. I've not seen it in the, the course as much recently, and uh, that's my older paper, as you can see. Um, but yeah, think about moving in X, Y, and Z coordinates, and it's very good uh, to get you thinking um, and how to attack these questions. You know, make sure you tick off uh, when you've used something. Um, very, very important to, to make sure you get everything out of the question. Okay, so yeah, um, we're moving X, Y, Z, and we've got a resultant based on adding or subtracting different vectors together. That's kind of all the the space vectors are about just now. Okay, and as we said at the beginning, vectors are effectively kind of written down version of how you're moving. Okay, X, Y, Z. They are, you know, magnitude and direction, but actually in math, quite a lot of the time, we're really just we're actually thinking a lot about the direction. Okay, so, um, well, that was helpful. And um, the next series, we're going to start looking at collinear um, vectors. So, exciting stuff.